Hey there folks and welcome to an update on Kilauea in Hawaii. We have some activity going on in Kilauea that prompted the alert level to be raised from advisory to watch or from yellow to orange by the USGS. So there's some things to look at and talk about. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Monday, September 16th. It's about 9 a.m. Mountain Time, about 5 a.m. over in Hawaii. And let's get right to it. As you may or may not know, over the past few months, we've had activity springing up in Kilauea, mainly along this east rift zone, this upper section of the east rift zone. You might remember that the lower section of the east rift zone um, had large eruptions in 2018, which resulted in the destruction of many homes, displaced people. It was, a, it was a true disaster in Hawaii. Since that time, the activity has mainly been confined to the summit region, but what we're seeing now is an uptick in earthquake activity in this region here. And while we can't say there's an eruption happening right now, there is some evidence that an eruption could take place, although sometimes these intrusions just end at that. They end with earthquakes and ground deformation and an intrusion, and oftentimes it doesn't culminate in an actual eruption. Uh, if we go and look at the actual area of interest here, this is the Middle East Rift Zone. Here's Pu'u'o'o. This was the primary event for the Kilauea volcano from 1983 through 2018, sending uh, immense amounts of lava mostly down to the coastline here. But we're looking at an area just uprift of that from Mauna Ulu, which erupted from 1969 to 1974, over to about Napao Crater, which is right here. So this little section of the Middle East Rift Zone is where we're seeing most of the earthquake and ground deformation activity. Let's go check out the USGS uh, update and so this was as of this morning um, let's just walk through this and I'll show you some of the accompanying graphics that go with it so the intrusion of magma that began on Saturday September 14th continues in the Middle East Rift Zone increasing the potential of an eruption and accordingly they've raised the advisory level or the alert level from advisory to watch or from yellow to orange uh, currently, it's in a remote part of the park, so the good news is there's really no threat to infrastructure. This is um, a long way from any homes or property other than uh, some trails and roads in the national park system. Um, intense and localized earthquakes between Mauna Ulu and Makuapuhi Crater, accompanied by ground deformation patterns indic indicative of underground crack growth, began at about six o'clock Hawaii time on Saturday the 14th. While the intensity of earthquake activity decreased, continued ground deformation shows that magma is still moving beneath the ground from summit storage chambers to the area between Mauna Ulu and Makuapuhi Crater. Uh, there's an INSAR image I'll show you in a second that shows the ground extension. And then this is as of last night, so Sunday evening, starting around nine o'clock and continuing until 10 p.m. this evening, infrasound instruments detected a strong signal typical of gas or steam venting and seismometers in the Middle East Drift Zone are recording weak, sustained, low-frequency tremor. However, the webcams haven't shown any evidence of eruptive activity, and the satellite imagery does not show any thermal anomalies at this time. So, you know, some data suggesting an eruption had begun, perhaps. Other data, especially the webcams and the satellite data, um, refuting that. Currently, strong rainfall in the area is complicating interpretation. In 2007, an intrusion in this area erupted a very small pad of lava, approximately half the size, the size of half of a football field. So it's possible a very small eruption could take place without detection in these conditions. Uh, and then they go on to say that this area was very active in the 60s and 70s, uh, you know, and then Pu'u'o'o from 1983 onward. Um, and so this is an area where we could see activity. So here's the area in question, just a little bit better map here from the USGS. Here is the road, Chain of Craters Road down here. This is this Middle East Rift Zone. So the Kilauea Summit is up here to the northwest. Uh, and here's Pu'u'o'o over here on the right with the orange and its eruptive lavas in, shown in orange. And then the purples here are some of the eruptions that took place in the 60s and 70s, mainly from Mauna Ulu, but from some of these uh, other vents as well. And so this is where we're seeing the bulk of the activity. If we check out the earthquakes over the past day, again, Kilauea Summit here, upper left corner. This is the Upper East Rift Zone. And then it takes a turn here. It becomes pretty much almost like 
due east west ish uh, and this is the middle east rift zone and then once you get past Pu'u'o'o and on down towards the coastline this is the lower east rift zone but this is where we're seeing the bulk of the earthquake activity between Mauna Ulu and Apau crater um, these earthquakes are happening because the magma is being is injecting itself into the existing fractures and the pressure and the volume of that magma is actually widening the cracks pushing them apart and as those cracks break and split that is manifesting itself as earthquakes as seismic energy and that's what we're detecting there are these earthquakes mostly pretty small but you can see there's a good number of them there about 110 or so on the map view and this is just within the last 24 hours if we actually add uh, the last week of earthquakes you can see the pattern there so quite a few up in the upper east drift zone but then this is the area of focus right here where we're seeing all the activity now and now we've got about 350 earthquakes 370 or so there in just the past week so tremendous amount of earthquake activity another way to check out the earthquakes is with this site here which actually has some fun functions um, we can first add some animation to this here so here's Kilauea summit up here um, and then here's the rift zone and I'm not sure if maybe this is an easier way to look at it let's go with the map view I think the earthquakes pop out a little bit easier there so again Kilauea summit here upper east rift zo zone uh, Mount Ulu right here and then going in towards Napao crater and Pu'u'u'u off there all the way on the right so this is the area where we're seeing the earthquakes if we um, animate these earthquakes let's see we can show those as well um, let's see here we go animate the earthquake so let's go ahead and add these in so this is gonna start on September 9th so about a week ago last uh, Saturday or so and notice it'll be start out really slow and not much activity a couple near the summit a couple in here but then it's gonna start to pick up especially as we get right now we're on the 12th of September once we get to the 15th so a couple in the upper east rift zone but watch how quickly right here they're gonna come in boom 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 uh, rapid fire succession um, that is the the intrusion of magma from this uh, and the earthquakes associated with that uh, the other fun thing we can do here is check these earthquakes out in three-dimensional view so we can sort of tilt everything on its side I've tried rotating this manually and I'm not good at it so I'm gonna just add the auto rotate function so you can see them kind of coming around there there's, there's the earthquakes at depth uh, and we can see them more or less aligning along that east-west trend from the north-south view they're kind of scattered but right there they all kind of line up pretty nicely so uh, again it's hard to this thing's hard to grab and move around there we go there they are kind of there's a view more or less from east to west you can see them lining up roughly along that trend there so um, okay so we've got that there and then one more thing just sticking with the earthquakes before we get to some of the other monitoring signals um, on Google Earth here we can actually add in those earthquakes as well so again for reference Kilauea caldera uh, down the Middle East rift zone this is Mauna Ulu and Pu'u'o'o so between these two cones here is we're going, we're going to see the bulk of these quakes so we'll go ahead and start adding these quakes and this this run will start on the um, I think it'll start on the 9th yeah the 9th or 10th here we are on the 10th of September the 11th here we are on the 12th I'll just call it the dates as they show up the 13th of September and then as we get to the 14th and to the 15th boom here comes all those quakes uh, in the Middle East Rift Zone the 15th of September the 16th of September and then just a few here on the 17th because um, the days just kind of begun over there we're just a few hours into the 17th so so there's the earthquake data um, switching over to um, the some of the other monitoring data from the USGS this is the past week at Kilauea so a similar pattern that we kind of showed animated there here's the earthquakes with depth so you can see um, or excuse me this is depth and position so location on the map mainly along this trend from the summit down into the Middle East Rift Zone. So you can see mainly concentrated to that region and very shallow. So shallow earthquakes indicative of that shallow magma body moving from some you know summit storage zone into the upper part of the East Rift Zone 
Um, no evidence that it's moved further down the East, East Rift Zone, so that's good news. That would be a big concern to Hawaii residents if we started seeing magma propagation da further down into the Rift Zone. We haven't seen that yet, so that's a good news. Um, earthquakes by day, so the bar graph here just shows number of earthquakes by day. You can see it ramping up from the 10th to the 11th to the 12th to the 13th, kind of stayed consistent, and then starting late on the 14th and into the 15th over the weekend, uh, things started to jump up. The red line shows the cumulative energy from all of those earthquakes. And one of the quakes that happened was, you can see it down here, this big circle here, that's a four point, I think it was a 4.3 that a lot of people felt uh, up near the summit area around Kilauea. So here's the earthquakes for the week, not much happening on the 10th, 11th, you can see a, a pronounced pickup in the number of earthquakes and the frequency, and that continuing, it just died down a little bit on the 14th, and then boom, those couple of big earthquakes uh, late on the 14th, continuing up till today. Um, and then some of the deformation data reflecting that movement at well. That big spike right there is most likely that 4.3 earthquake. Um, you can see that kind of lines up pretty nicely with that. So that's probably related to that big earthquake spike there. The INSAR data, so they've passed over this area with a satellite on September 2nd. Um, and it bounces radar waves over the area. They went over it again on the 14th and any movement of the ground during that interval is measured and so you can see here's the 4.3 earthquake so there was probably some movement of the ground over here creating these kind of colored fringes this would be changes in elevation so this is caused by that earthquake here but then the more pronounced thing here along this middle east rift zone would be uh, th these colored fringes here which are related to the magma moving up into the Middle East Rift Zone and pushing up on the ground and displacing the ground a little bit. Um, and so we're seeing ground deformation with the INSAR data and with the GPS data that shows us that things are moving. The best way to see the GPS data is looking at the station near the Pu'uo'o um, cone. And this is for the whole last year or so. So you can see it was generally moving downward. There was a deflationary trend but starting this year in August or so, things have really bumped up. And so there's definitely inflation going on in this Middle East Rift Zone, and that's even detected down there uh, at Pu'uo'o. So um, first place to, if there was to be an eruption, you'd wanna check maybe these webcams, but it's dark and probably cloudy so far. So it doesn't look like anything showing up so far, but as we get a little bit further in today, we'll see if anything pops up from the USGS. Most likely scenario is there was not an eruption and there was just an intrusion. That's something we often get with these types of events. There's earthquake activity um, and it doesn't necessarily manifest itself as an eruption, but it's definitely an area we already have been focusing on and will continue to focus on um, because there's a good likelihood that at some point with these repeated intrusions that will culminate in some type of surface eruptive activity and this would be the primary area where we might see that um, again the park this uh, national park is closed chain of craters road uh, today given the amount of unrest and that there's an eruption that's possible here depending on exactly where the vent were to open up if there were to be an eruption uh, that could possibly flow across chain of craters road and there are some trails out here in the area and some trailheads but generally it's a pretty remote area not a lot of infrastructure uh, no homes uh, or property other than the things that the park service has out there so uh, with that we'll go ahead and sign off i will catch you with another update as more data becomes available if there's anything significant that goes on. Uh, if you like these updates, please make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure uh, you support the channel. There's links under the video description if you'd like to donate. And thanks for your time. We'll see you next time. Take care.